Hi, uh, my name is Savas. I'm a radiologist working in Africa, and this is one of Sav's seven minute snippets. This lecture is about diagnosing TB in children, and in particular using the frontal chest radiograph because we're going to use another lecture to look at the lateral chest radiograph. The lecture is designed for use by anybody working with children and needing to make a diagnosis of TB. And it's intended that these skills help you make a diagnosis at the point of care. Of course, radiology knowledge is wider than this and uh, would allow you to make better diagnoses about other conditions as well. So let's get started. Your training's about to begin and I expect you to look like the after training picture once we're done. This is a normal chest radiograph. It's done AP and I want you to note that the arms are up. And this often helps those people taking the chest x-rays uh, in children to get a better x-ray. You note that that's an open mouth of a hippopotamus sticking to the African theme. That represents the vessels at a hilum. It's a really important part of this lecture because that's where lymphadenopathy occurs and that's where you hope to pick up TB lymphadenopathy and make your diagnosis. So just have another look. The vessels meeting at the hilum should be like the open mouth of a hippopotamus. Same for the other side, but you'll see that the hippopotamus will be hidden by the heart shadow, so not so easy on the left. So that brings me to the main point of the lecture today, that the diagnosis of TB on the x-ray in children is identification of lymphadenopathy, and that's easier said than done. So I want you to concentrate on the obvious findings. And not worry if you can't see, because there are other diagnostic things that are going to happen on the ground in the clinic. So if you're going to pretend there's lymphadenopathy rather than be sure that there's lymphadenopathy, it's probably not going to work or help you in any way. So let's look at TB on the frontal chest radiograph. I'm going to remind you, the hilum should look like the open mouth of a hippopotamus. If there's lymphadenopathy, we say it looks like a cauliflower or a mass. So here's the normal again, where you see the arrow is a normal hilum with diverging vessels, open mouth of a hippopotamus. And that's a picture of a cauliflower, if you don't know what I'm talking about, with a big fruit and vegetable wildlife theme going on here. Those are obvious lymph nodes in the bottom left-hand corner. Exactly where the arrow is, you can see a big lumpy mass replacing the open mouth of the hippopotamus. Here's another example. A nice round convex structure. That's right hyla lymphadenopathy, and there's your cauliflower in the right hilum. You could get lymphadenopathy on the left, and if it's big enough, it'll extend beyond the cardiac shadow. So there's a cauliflower sticking beyond the margins of the cardiac shadow on the left. My last point is about identifying calcified lymphadenopathy. That's a calcified lymph node in a patient with a GON complex and a GON focus. You can see the calcification quite easily in this case, but I want to assure you that it's not so easy most of the time. And we, we rarely see calcification nowadays, even on CT scanning, which is much easier to detect calcification. If you see it, you've got tuberculosis probably. But if you don't, this is not the thing you've been waiting for. I want to make a second important point. It's actually quite hard to see lymphadenopathy in kids. So what you want to do is look for anything that will help you make your diagnosis. I put up an upside down tree because that's what we're dealing with when we talk about the airway in a child. It's a bronchial tree. So they're diverging branches that become thinner and thinner. The important thing is, is that TB lymphadenopathy is firm and hard and the airway in a child is soft and compressible because of the lack of cartilage. So what you get is compressed airways when the TB nodes are big enough. This should be an indirect sign that helps you make the diagnosis. So have a look. That's a CT scan of the normal airway. Smaller and smaller branches coming off the main branches. And this is TB in a child, again on CT with a coronal reconstruction. You can see the narrow areas of the bronchial tree. You don't have to remember any numbers. That's the beauty. Thinner branches are supposed to be more peripheral. If you've got a big branch further out and a narrower branch more proximally, then you can be sure this is compression. It's not the only cause of compressed airways in children, but when you're looking for TB, it's quite important to look for this particular sign. 
So let's look at some airwaves on chest x-ray that are compressed. So I've cornered it in just so that you can see the displaced trachea. So trachea in a child should be to the right because the aortic arch is on the left. If you see the trachea pushed over in a child that's not rotated, then you should worry. And there's a compressed bronchus intermedius, a compressed left main bronchus. I don't need to see the lymph nodes. And as you can see, I'd have a lot of trouble in this case because of the airspace disease or the pneumonia that's going on around it. Here's another example. A very narrow bronchus intermedius that, uh, that uh, distends more peripherally and a very, very narrow left main bronchus that becomes much wider. And a third example, there you go. As you're getting it, probably the bronchus in the intermedius is the most common site of compression. So what I want you to do, this is the kind of a last lesson of the day. You're looking for lymph nodes, you're looking for airway compression, and you've got to be Sherlock Holmes. So if you don't know who he is, he's a famous British investigator from Scotland Yard. So this is quite a difficult case I've put in front of you. You can see there's all sorts of parenchymal disease going on, pneumonia. And it's quite difficult to, to see lymphadenopathy at the hilum because there is no hilum to be seen. If you look through the density, you might see the bronchus compressed over there. Here's another case with breakdown of a parenchymal disease. You look through the density, you can find the bronchial compression. Again, you may be attracted to look at the airspace disease, which is bulging and exudative. If you look through, you'll see the bronchial compression. In all three cases, you know this is tuberculosis because none of the other bacterial pneumonias do that. One more thing, patient with lots wrong with him. There's an effusion tracking up the side, a lamella effusion. There's airspace disease. You can't see the right cardiac margin. I look through the density. There's your compression. And my last picture of the day is TB isn't just made with lymphadenopathy, which I've led you to believe. If you see bilateral nodules, much like stars in the sky, that's miliary TB. You're probably right making the diagnosis in these conditions too. So that's it for the AP chest radiograph. I hope you've learned that our main job is to look for lymph nodes. And the best way to do that is to make sure that instead of an open mouth of a hippo, you've got a big fat mass of a cauliflower. And the second thing that I want you to walk away with is that airway compression is really important. It doesn't happen in too many conditions and it could be the only sign of tuberculosis. Now this is not histological confirmation or laboratory confirmation. It's for you to use at the point of care to help you when you suspect TB while you're waiting culture or other tests. I hope to see you again for the next seven minute snippet, which is the lateral chest radiograph.